the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Whomever you are and whatever is happening on your journey of life, it is God who welcomes you here today, and so do we. We are so very, very glad that you are here. Special welcome to visitors. We're always happy to have visitors here at St. Mark's, and we hope you can make yourself at home. We do ask if you would, uh, if you would, if you are a visitor, to take a moment and find a welcome card in one of the pew racks ahead of you or any piece of paper and just jot down your name and information. I'll pray for you by name following the service and I'd love to make contact with you as well. Or any other information you need to get down to the office, that's a great way to do that and then put it in the offering uh, plate as it comes by. For those of you worshiping at home, I understand we're trying a new format, Zoom, so we're so glad you're here with us in real time. You may want to have crackers or um, bread, wine, juice with you for the celebration of Holy Communion. A few other quick notes um, today. We just want to remind you today and all days, when we invite you to stand, only stand if it is good for you. If it's better for you to worship and remain seated, please do so. The point is what helps you to worship However you are sitting or standing, that is your own piety or your own needs, and we want to respect that completely. Today is special on another note. Not only is it the first Sunday of Lent, but we will be having a new liturgy today. It's a, lit a liturgy that our own Jason Chase has composed. And as we've been practicing it over the last five weeks, I find that it gives me such assurance, gentle assurance of God's presence and wraps us in love. So may you enjoy it, and may it bring you to worship as it has for me. We continue with our mission statement, which we say with conviction and with resound. Celebrating God's love and forgiveness, we serve others. If you wish to, you may stand for our opening hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
continue with confession and forgiveness. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God came to you again and again and gathers you under the wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, you led your people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide us now so that following your Son, we may walk safely through the wilderness of this world toward the life you alone can give. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We invite Miss Melissa and all the children to come forward. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. So, uh, should I wait for Stella or just start? Can you guys come up? She's in the restroom. Oh, that's okay. No, I think we just need to start. Yeah? Okay. So, I'm going to show you guys this. So, as you can see, it's a Gatorade. Probably some of you are tempted and like, mmm, a Gatorade. But if I would take out a candy and put a candy here in front of a kid, they'd be like, mmm, candy, and they'd be tempted to grab it, right? Why don't we, why don't we um, go ahead with the reading and come back when they're free? I don't want them to miss your... Okay. okay. Little adjustment, okay. Thank you all for being flexible. We're going to go ahead with the readings, and then the children will be able to come forward freely and enjoy. We're just going to go ahead with this. Okay. It's all good. We move on and take care of everything else later. <laughs> the reading is from Deuteronomy, the 26th chapter. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle it, you take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling in his name. You shall go to the priest who is in the office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, 
And there he became a great nation, mighty and prosperous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a de terrifying display of power, with signs and wonders. This is land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given you and your house. Here ends the reading. The psalm for today, it's the 91st psalm. It is a reading and response. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, For God will give you the angels' charge over you to guard you in all your ways. You will tread upon the lion, cub, and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. They will call me, and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. Please stand for the gospel. Ah, oh, good. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for being flexible. Okay, good morning everyone. I'll go ahead and start over again. Okay, can you all see this? It's a Gatorade, right? If I show you, you'd probably be tempted, right? Be like, mmm, Gatorade. You'd be like, I want it. What if I show you guys? Would you guys be tempted? Yeah? What if I put you a candy? Would you be tempted? Yes. You'd probably be like, oh, give me that candy, right? So, do you know exactly what tempted means? Do you guys know what tempted means? Yes? So what does it mean, Stella? It means that you want it. Yes, correct. Exactly. So being tempted is when you want to do something even though you know it's wrong. So right now, you guys are probably tempted to eat, I mean, to drink what I showed you. That's, that's on here. And now, how does it make you feel knowing that I'm not allowing you to drink this? I'm okay. You're okay? <laughs> what about you? I don't like Gatorade. You don't like Gatorade? Okay, so that's why she's not tempted. <laughs> you don't like it either? Oh, man. I do. You do? Okay, so then you're probably tempted, huh? Yeah. Okay, so you probably feel sad that I'm not allowing you to drink this. So I gave you this temptation because one time Jesus was tempted. Jesus is God's son and he cannot sin, but he still feels temptation. Today in Luke 4, 1 through 13, we will learn about how God handles his temptation. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pray. Thank you, Jesus, for these wonderful kids. Thank you for having them here. Take care of them and their family. Also take care of all these people here 
who are here at church. Take care of all those people who are sick. Thank you, God, for always showing us what's best and also for showing us the correct way to avoid temptation. In the name of Jesus, amen. as you are able. Gospel according to Luke, the fourth chapter. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the, the same Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God. Command these stones to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered, It is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you, I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you, then, will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him, until an opportune time. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Jesus, you are so cool. Completely human, yet completely divine, and you withstood all those temptations. You fasted for 40 days. It reminds us of those 40 days in the wilderness. You stood up to a powerful and convincing liar and made sure Satan knew his place. You didn't succumb to any of these great temptations to indulge or seek power or prestige. And Jesus, you didn't even show off all your incredible superpower skills by jumping off a cliff or jumping off the temple and not getting hurt. Jesus, you are so cool. Amen. I could be done with the sermon right there, right? Right? Don't get your hopes up. Because that's a quick look at this gospel, am I correct? This passage is all about how cool Jesus is, right? How Jesus did all these things, and it has nothing to do with your life or my life. Am I correct? Oh my goodness, I hope this has a lot to do with our lives. So let's take a look at this passage on a deeper level, starting with the two passages that Bob read for us today. When we start with that Deuteronomy passage, perhaps you've heard it before. It's a wonderful and crisp retelling of the story of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses. And the speaker is to be you. It's as if the words are coming from your own lips, telling the story, this is where I came from. This is my people's story. God saved us. God saved my people. I acknowledge it. 
God saved us. And this is how I know who I am. And now I honor this God by giving the best that I have. We heard from the psalm. Perhaps you recognize parts of it. Do you know that beautiful song, Eagle's Wings? We'll raise you up on eagle's wings. Did you hear many of the verses coming from this psalm? A beautiful, beautiful song that honestly, interestingly, we frequently sing at funerals. Why do we sing that at funerals? The person died. They didn't survive. Why would we use it there? Is it not because of those promises that are still within them? Not the promise that we will never experience harm. Sometimes I hear those words and I say, how can we sing this with confidence? Why on earth does it give comfort? The reason it gets comfort is this, because we name the fears. We name the things that could go wrong. We name the struggles. We cry out. We say, this is what hurts. This is what I'm afraid of. And even if, even if evil does befall us, even if we dash our foot against a rock and take a nasty fall, even if wild animals or natural disasters come our way, even if war occurs, Lord, you are still my refuge and my strength. In you I trust, even if. Thus we enter the gospel today, knowing who we are, remembering as we did last week, those highlights in our life when we were assured of God's presence, when we knew God was with us, hold on to those things, that is your story, and trusting even if. Jesus knew all of the references Jesus knew who he was. He knew his heritage. He knew the promises that had been given to Israel by God. These are the same promises given to you. This is your heritage as well. And Jesus knew this, knew who he was, and knew who God is as he entered the time of temptation in the wilderness. It was a member of our Bible study who pointed out this week that although it would seem that this temptation in the wilderness 40 days is a big reference to the wandering of the Israelites in the wilderness, it is truly to be hearkening back to Genesis 3, the story of Adam and Eve in the garden. I honestly had never seen that before. Thanks, Bob. A reminder of that great deceiver, the father of lives, the one who is still alive and well today, the bringer of chaos, and the one who comes to steal and kill and destroy. The evil one still does come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. In that ancient story in Genesis 3, the great deceiver came in the form of a serpent and tempted Adam and Eve, and they succumbed, twisting words. It promised things that had terrible hidden consequences, and it made them question who they are, made them question who God is and God's good intention. It sowed doubt. It sowed distrust, it played on fears, and it harmed them. Did God say? Did God say? But Jesus came equipped in the wilderness for this encounter with the great deceiver. Fresh from his baptism, still hearing the words, the same words that were said over you in your baptism. You are my child. With you, I am well pleased. Jesus went into the wilderness full 
of the Holy Spirit. Are you full of the Holy Spirit? Does the Spirit dwell in you? It does. It does. It's a promise made at your baptism. The Holy Spirit resides within you. You are full of the Holy Spirit. It is that calm inner voice that guides you and directs you, the one that will not be ignored, that bothers you until you pay attention. It is that voice that keeps repeating itself in your life until finally we say, hey, I think I'm supposed to do such and such. It is that guidance that comes from a wise person in your life that sets you on the right path for God speaks through God's people. That spirit lives with and lives outside of you and resounds with you and you have the Holy Spirit within you. That means that you can withstand temptations as well. Let's take a look at these three temptations in the Lucan Gospel. Turn the stone into a loaf of bread. My husband and I had a chance to go to Israel, and as we were going around, we were brought to the place they believed that Jesus would have been when he was in the time of the wilderness, and it looks a lot like Joshua Tree. So when we hear this, turn this stone into a loaf of bread, we're not talking about a little day supply of bread. No, we're talking a boulder the size of a house. Boulders everywhere, everywhere as far as the eye can see. With a word, Jesus, you could feed the entire nation of Israel by simply changing these stones into bread, towering abundance. Because you see, these passages are never just about satisfying your own personal needs or handling your own personal demons. No, everything that Jesus says and does is about the community, the larger needs, and yes, the political landscape. Because if you think this is only about your own personal Jesus, then think bigger. Think much, much bigger. Now, I can't totally tell you why Jesus doesn't just agree to do this. Why, God, why don't you just simply take our problems and solve them with one miracle? Why? But we do know this. As we look through all the Gospels, and in fact, the entirety of Scripture, we see that Jesus chooses to work through people. That is how God does things. God works through us by choice. Does Jesus eventually feed people? You bet he does. But he takes that meager offering, right, of the five loaves, the two fish, and it turns it into abundance. Whatever it is we can give, we give, and God takes it and makes it good. The second temptation. God, oh, end all wars. Everyone could now bow down to you, Jesus, and there would be no more attempts at world domination. Jesus does not here deny the power of the evil one over world politics or leaders or war, something heavily on our minds today as we watch what is happening in Ukraine. But Jesus points higher. There is only one we worship there is only one we serve. My friends, we do not ignore politics or issues of justice and peace, never. Instead, we do what we do in all things. We bring these things to God in deep prayer, with intercession, with complete willingness to do whatever it is that God would have us do. We bring these issues to God which is why we're going to be having a prayer vigil. I know it's a bit off. It's on the 18th of March. It will be at St. John's Episcopal Church at 6 o'clock Friday evening. We hope you can come so we together can raise this issue, which I hope would be resolved by then. If not, we definitely need this time of prayer on the 18th of March. 
And as you saw in the e-newsletter, an opportunity as well to give through the ELCA disaster response to the Eastern European crisis. Any checks that we would receive will send immediately on. 100% goes immediately to those in need. We respond with what we have. After these two major temptations, doesn't that third temptation jump from this high place? Doesn't it seem almost silly? <laughs> it reminds me of that statement that we parents say to every one of our kids, right? If all your friends told you to jump off a cliff, would you? But what is the temptation here? Prove yourself. I dare you. Show your man enough. I don't believe you, so show me. Maybe this isn't as silly as it seems. Jesus doesn't even respond to that temptation. Evil one, do you think a grand show will demonstrate to you that I trust God? You do not even exist for me. I have nothing to prove to you, evil one, or your minions be gone. I know who I am, and I know the one in whom I trust. No other answer is needed. And the devil departed from him until an opportune time. Know who you are, my friends. You are the beloved child of God. You have but one authority, which is a loving God. Know this, cherish it, embrace it, and enjoy it. And may everything we do and everything we are flow from this great truth. Amen. We invite you now to stand as you are able. For the Lenten song, I want Jesus to walk with me.
Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the earth and all its creatures, protect wilderness places and all plants and animal species that call them home, sustain farmers and all the laborers who work the land and harvest the fruits of its abundance. Merciful God, we pray for the church, sharpen its proclamation of the world so that your people learn to reject voices of deception and distraction. In these crazy times when death and, distract and destruction is broadcast live on TV, strengthen us who are tempted to believe lives about themselves or others. Merciful God, we pray for the nations of the world. Awaken elected leaders and government officials to the needs of those who are oppressed and grant them compassion to deal mercifully with immigrants and refugees who flee to safety. Merciful God, we pray for those in need. Rescue those experiencing mental illness or contending with addiction. Ease the anxiety of those who live with dementia. Command your angels concerning all who are sick. We pray especially for the recipients of our prayer quilts and their families and continued prayers for Jackie, Sherry, Denny, Ruby, Margarita, Manuel, and for all the families of St. Mark's. We ask Heavenly Father to surround each of these people in your encompassing love, giving them strength, courage, comfort, healing, and peace. Give patience to those who are waiting for answers. Grant hope to those who have reached the limits of treatment Give compassionate hearts to those who accompany loved ones through illness and uncertainty. Merciful God, we pray for this assembly. Bless those who bake bread and prepare the table for our communion celebration. Accompany those who share the bounty of this meal with those who are homebound or hospitalized. Merciful God, At this time, other prayers may be offered out loud or silently in your heart. Merciful God, we pray your blessing on the ministries of this congregation, especially our children and youth ministries, and for Lutheran social services that they continue to help many that those in need may be blessed. Merciful God, we give thanks for our family of members who have died, Dorothy Nader and Bob Dreesen especially. Gather them with all the saints into your heavenly dwelling place. Encourage us with the promise that all who call upon your name will be saved. Merciful God, accept the prayers that we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ, Amen. on Carol, that she may trust God, that God will take care of her daughter. We pray for Nicole as she deals with a new diagnosis, a serious, with serious symptoms of a diagnosis, be with her doctors and her caregivers. Gracious Lord, we pray also for Karen as she struggles and as she heals from cancer. 
Gracious Lord, we pray that you will hold them all in your hands, that you will supply what is needed, and that you will walk with them every step of the way with your comfort, your guidance, and your healing. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you, Lord, and I with you always. Please share with one another, one another a sign of God's peace. Those of you who are worshiping at home, if you want to send us a message or share the peace of Christ around or simply raise your hand in a direction of someone who needs God's peace and bless them. Bless them good. Bless you all. Peace be with you. Our offering, we are grateful for your ongoing support for the mission and ministries of St. Mark's Lutheran Church. It is, things are going well here. It is busy, it is active, it is fun. We hope that you are having fun. It's tiring, it's, <laughs> it's good tiring. We, uh, so thank you for your ongoing support. If you want to bring your checks in or send your checks in, that is wonderful. If you wish to use our Venmo, it is at St. Mark's Church Chula Vista, or you may work this out with your bank to give electronically. Before we go on, I think it's not in here, so we're gonna stop for our Thanksgiving moment. And um, our, we give thanks for a new liturgy, which I am so excited about. Um, and we'd like to invite Jason to say a word about that. Good morning. I just wanted to uh, make a special note of thanks to uh, Sherry Barker, pastor, and Chris Lewis for uh, endowing me with their faith that I could uh, do this, but also to let me do this. Uh, this is a gift from me to the church. I know we've been through a lot in the past couple of years, but um, I'm so grateful. <laughs> for everything that you've done for me and that uh, we can do together. Sorry. Um, and I just want to say thank you. And this is my gift to all of those who uh, have stood by us and, and come back. And I just want to say that this is a, a moment that I think that we all can reflect on and hopefully give thanks for. So thank you. the earth is yours and everything in it and yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world through Jesus Christ our Lord amen I invite you if you would like to to stand for the celebration of Holy Communion and you will want your bulletin so that you may sing along Thank <laughs> you. 
them up to the goal. and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. For the forgiveness of sin, do this in remembrance of me. And now let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We invite you to be seated, if that's easier for you, as we partake in Holy Communion. Those of you worshiping at home have that bread, wine, juice available as we say these words. And as we commune each other or ourselves, the body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. to love of God who takes away the sin of the world have mercy on us Christ to grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood keep and unite us now and forever. Amen.
Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Receive the blessing. Good morning. Good morning. You get me today. All right. You know, this uh, church is pretty pretty active, wouldn't you say? You know, that uh, newsletter is starting to look like a Chicago Tribune Sunday Journal there or something. So today, uh, March, uh, today, March 6th, we're going to have adult Bible study in Jacobson Hall by none other than James Jephsith. All right. He's underway. And we're going to have parent student meeting for all the uh, confirmation students at the same time to plan for confirmation going forward and so forth. I'd like to highlight also that uh, we're going to be having our first soup supper this coming Wednesday at 530. The uh, clipboard is in the narthex for those who would like to sign up. And those of you who missed the clipboard but still want to come, please come. We would love to have you. We'd rather have you there than the food sometimes. So. Why don't you plan on being on there on uh, Wednesday night? We'll be doing this all the way through the Lent season. Men's breakfast next Saturday at the at the marina, at the galley at the marina at nine o'clock, and then the ladies' breakfast also at Dorothy Geyer's at nine o'clock next Sunday. Uh, a couple of things, as you probably read in the newsletter, that we do know that the property that surrounds this church has been uh, sold. It is in escrow. We cannot, uh, we don't know the details of the, of the entire transaction, but we hope to be meeting with the principals involved with that transaction soon. And once we have done that, we will bring everything to you so that you'll be updated on what is actually going on. Uh, the little bit that I know about it is it's good. It's going to be good for us. So we're probably going to be happy with, with the result. Um, we have established, as I mentioned last time I was up here, we have the church council has uh, decided instead of com forming committees that we're going to have task groups, task forces to deal with things that come up. And I'm happy to announce today that we have two task forces in place. One of them uh, is to assist and liaison with the pastors in working with our music department, uh, dealing with our, our upcoming uh, count, uh, events, our, our uh, what are the concert series, I'm sorry. And none other than Skip Knutson will be heading that up. Skip, you want to hum a couple bars? No, never mind. It's okay. And then we hit the second the task force we have is uh, to deal with uh, disaster preparedness. Uh, we need to be prepared for things that can come up from time to time that could affect our church and our membership. And Robert Nava will be heading that up for us. And we'll be dealing with training for the police department, medical people, to help get this, uh, the congregation, the ushers, people who are here to help uh, take care of issues that, that, that might come up. And uh, lastly, I would just like to ask the members of the congregation, you're gonna be meeting your church council here very soon. 
uh, just remember that the church council is involved on your behalf and we would like to have you as you see things that need to be done or you have concerns that you think need to be brought forward please contact your ch your church council members we're all capable of dealing with what comes up we represent you we want to talk about it we'll bring it to the pastors the pastors will be certainly involved with all the decisions that we come up with but we want to hear from you and things to help make this church even better than it is today if you do that that would be great and then the last announcement is we, we are in need of volunteers to make coffee on sunday morning uh, for those of you who don't know how to make the coffee we'll have training for you uh, and also uh, and those of you who haven't done it in a while maybe want to be retrained that'll be available as well and the uh, sign up sheet for that is also in the kitchen so uh, have a great day don't forget daylight savings time next sunday don't be late we would like to invite all of the uh, council members for this year to come forward please for your installation and just a quick note too we will also have the funeral of dorothy nader that is on this coming saturday at uh, two o'clock Am I missing anyone? Everyone's here? Can be here. Thank you. Dear Christian friends, baptized into the priesthood of Christ, we are called to offer ourselves to the Lord of the church in thanksgiving for what he has done and continues to do for us. It is our privilege to recognize and support those who are engaged in the work of this congregation, especially the ministry of the Congregational Council. These people have been elected by the congregation to positions of leadership and are called forward. Thank you for being here. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ liberated you from sin and death and made you members of his church. Through word and sacrament, you have been nurtured in faith. St. Paul writes, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives to everyone ability for particular service. The spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith reflect him in whose name we gather. You are to work together with other members to see that the worship and work of Christ is done in this congregation and that God's will is done in this community and in the whole world. You are to be diligent in your specific area of serving that the one Lord who empowers you is glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, to help maintain the life and harmony of this congregation. Are you ready to accept and to faithfully execute the duties of this office to which you have been elected? If so, please answer yes by the help of God. People of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, answer please yes by the help of God. Yes, by the help of God. I now declare you to be installed as officers and council members of this congregation. God bless you with God's Holy Spirit that you may prove faithful servants of Christ. Amen. We pray for you now for all who will offer themselves in your names. We give thanks, O God. Give them joy in service and constant care and guidance. Help us all to be willing servants and thankful recipients of ministry, that your name be glorified, your people live in peace, and your will be done. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to turn around. Of course, you've been, hopefully everyone knows who you are already. We thank you. And as they tap you on the shoulder and ask to help out, your answer is, sure, I'm open, right? Okay, good. So Melissa working with children and youth. The Skip is working with music and worship. Rob uh, Nava is working with um, safety at this point. That's the main area for him. Uh, 
Chris is everything, no, just kidding. Council President, um, Sherry Vice President, Eric Posada is working with Pastor Alicia on um, communication as and member care as is Mari Lezagara, particularly focused on the second service. Oh, I'm sorry, Eric is secretary, that's the, yeah. I'm just thinking about how much Pastor Alicia needs your help. Okay, great. We invite you to be seated, thank you. Okay. We invite you to stand as you would like for our sending him hide me. to God.